All right, this video is going to start looking at different ways that we can use Laplace transforms in order to apply like multiplications of functions. So one thing that we need to make sure is true that we know is if you need to take the Laplace of f times g, but that is not just the Laplace of f times the Laplace of g. Okay, we can't just do those things. Now, linear transformations, if again, I wanna take the Laplace of f plus g, that's fine, like linear transformations are good, but linear transformations don't cover this multiplication piece here. Uh, but there are specific types of functions that we can apply the full Laplace transform on, and by that definition, we can find some shortcuts. So it is true that if you have an e to the a function in front of f of t, then you can just take big F, so F being the Laplace of little f of t, you can just take big F and then plug in S minus A, and you can see why that's the case here um, with our, our formula and our definition. Essentially what we're doing is we're just moving F of S over to S minus A because we have that E to the AT here that we are using. So let's look at an example. If I wanted to find the Laplace of E to the 5T times T cubed, then I could say, that, okay, well, the Laplace of T cubed is three factorial over S squared. Therefore, the Laplace of E to the 5T t cubed is 3 factorial over s to the fourth, and then we say where s goes to s minus 5. And so that's going to be 3 factorial over, and then in place of s, I plug in s minus 5 to the power of 4. We did something just like this one. Um, on one of the homework assignments and you had to use the E cosine integral craziness from Cal 2 in order to do that. Now this becomes a little bit easier. So if we write, let's write the Laplace of the cosine of 4T first and see what that is. And so we say that that is S over S squared plus 16. And so then the Laplace of an E function in front means I'm going to take this function and wherever I see an S, I'm going to let that become S minus negative two, so plus two. So that's going to be S plus two and S plus two squared plus 16. Now we also need to be able to do some inverse form as well. So if we notice an S minus A inside of a um, function that we're looking at, um, then you can just say like, okay, well, what if I notice F of S and then that's gonna be as S goes to A or S goes to S minus A, excuse me. Um, and so I can kind of backtrack it that way. So let's look at this first function here, I have inside s plus five, and then I have s minus three squared. Well, I need to split this up. This is a partial fractions question. So I'm gonna split this up into two s plus five over s minus three squared. And I have a repeated denominator, so I do that and it's linear, so I do that by making sure that I have an A over the possibility that there's just one of these, okay, and then B over this. When I find 2S plus 5 and I multiply through by this denominator, A is all by itself.
And so we get that 2s plus 5 must be equal to as minus 3a plus b. And so a must be 2. And 5 must then be negative 6 plus b. And so b must be 11. All right, so one thing that I'm noticing here is I have that S minus three kind of down here in the bottom, and that looks like um, an E function. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna have two E to the three T as one of my um, inverse Laplace pieces. And then I'm noticing here that if I needed to find the inverse Laplace, of 11 over s squared as s goes to s minus 3 then this would be a polynomial function and so I would have 11 here in the front and then this would be n plus 1 is 2 so this must be a t but Let's remind ourselves up here, when I have that, that f of big S as S goes to S minus 3, that means I must have an E to the 3T after. All right, let's look at solving a full differential equation here. All right, so let's take the Laplace. I'm going to have S squared, capital Y, minus S times 2, minus 17, minus 6 times SY, minus 2, plus 9 big Y, equals, all right, now I need to have the Laplace of T squared. That's 2 over s cubed, but then I'm going to let s go to s minus 3. So that's going to be 2 over s minus 3 cubed. All right, let's factor out the y. I have s squared minus 6s plus 9. And then what do I have left over here? 2s minus 17 plus 12. And so I'm going to add over here 2s, and then that's a negative 5, so plus 5. And I could multiply through here, but one thing that I'm noticing is that this is s minus 3 squared and so I'm actually just going to leave this with 2 over s minus 3 to the power of 5 in this case plus 2s plus 5 over s minus 3 squared. Um, I, if I were to like multiply here by s minus 3 cubed over s minus 3 cubed. I could have done that, but I'm just going to have to do partial fraction decomposition as um, again, and that term here is like the same. So this is going to be a better route for this problem. Now, I already know this one. We just figured that out, so now I just need to look at this. Okay, this to me looks like 2 over s to the fifth with s going to s minus 3. So n plus 1 being 5 means that n must be 4. And so that's going to be 2 over 4 factorial t to the fourth. And then since I have that translation here, e to the 3t. So my overall function for y is 
2e to the 3t plus, what did we get, 11t e to the 3t plus 2 over 4 factorial t to the 4th e to the 3t. In this problem, if I would have tried to approach this with maybe like undetermined coefficients or something else from a previous chapter, we could have done that. When you do that, you do get repeated roots. Maybe I'll just write it over here. m squared minus 6m plus 9 equals 0. We do get that m equals um, 3 as a double. And so my complementary function, would be here. The problem though is, and then I have a repeated piece here, right? So like I have this repeated piece and I got this squared. So um, I might start with like a yp of a t squared e to the three t. But when I go in and plug in and I solve, I get that a is zero, like I'm not gonna end up being getting that. So then I might be like, okay, well, let me try again with yp equals maybe like b t cubed. And it just so happens when I plug that in, I'm gonna get that b equals zero. So that doesn't work either. And it's not until you get all the way up to this with guess and check that you're gonna end up getting a solution. Then you still have to plug in those initial conditions to solve for c1 and c2. So in this case, it might actually be a lot faster to just apply the Laplace transform instead of this guess and check forever and ever and ever. You could do variation of parameters as well if you really wanted to. Um, but Laplace transforms allows us to do um, this method to find our last piece, that particular solution, a little bit quicker.